What's cracking, guys? Welcome back to another Honda Recap Monday night. Thank you all for joining me live in Premiere. I got some new stuff to talk about, some channels, some cool topics to talk about last week. You know the drill. Roll the intro. <laughs> What's cracking, guys? Welcome back to yet again another episode of the Honda Recap, where we hang out here Monday night, 6 p.m. West Coast time, talking about Hondas, hanging out in the premiere, going over what's been kind of going on, and just hanging out after a fun weekend. Hopefully you guys did something with your car. Let me know in the comments of the premiere right now. What have you guys got going on? Parts, news, what do you guys want to talk about? Let me know. This week's episode, I want to tell you I'm proud to say is sponsored by me. Honda Vlogs, hit yourself up, hondavlogs.com slash shop, pick yourself up a shirt, hoodie, a sticker, or anything else you guys want to support the channel. Still rocking this hoodie, I'm not going to lie, it's been like a year now, still feeling good, still comfy as hell, a lot of people tell me they're still comfy, and it's getting cold out, think about it guys, think about it. Anyway, really excited to be back here, I wanted to touch on some things that we talked about last week, one of which was, do you think we're ever going to get back to the cool stuff, the really low LED underglow, you know... Just the way things used to be in the early 2000s as far as body kits and things like that. And a lot of people, as you can tell right here, gave really long examples of what they feel. I'm really excited that some people are actually, you know, they, they like it. They, you know, they liked it like I liked it. They would really love to see it come back. But at the same time, I think we all know that it was a fad. It was just a thing well, at the time we've kind of moved on from it. But certain elements, you know, certain elements can come back. And that's the fun part about the community. Like I said, we got OEM, OEM Plus, and then we got a little bit of spice, you know? And if you wanna play with that spice, that's on you. But I think a little bit of those elements is definitely going to be coming back in the future just to keep it a little, you know, different. This week I wanted to throw out to two guys to let me know in the comments below, FG twos and FA fives. Throw me some sick ones down in the comments right now, guys. I'm really interested. I had a really good friend, James. I had a video on my channel going over his FA5. He got it brand new, gutted it, full track car. I know Gerb out there has an FG2. He's K24 swapping. That's another really awesome FG2. I feel like FG2s don't get that much love. I got a buddy who has one himself. He likes it, but you don't really see him. You've been driving on the street right now. You don't really see that, you know? Like, what if you bought a car and you're driving it and now you see your car everywhere? I don't know if it's like that for FG2s. You think? Let me know. I'm really excited to know what you guys think about the FG2 chassis. Do you think they're underrated? Where did they go? Why maybe didn't they do as well as you'd expect them to? The FA5s, I think, did it really well. I think a lot of people want that four-door SI. And when you finally get it, if you can find one like in white or black even, whoo, a black FA5. That's clean. All right, guys, one thing I wanted to talk about was that I wanted to bring a new segment into this right here, the Honda Recap, and that's going over new cars. And I believe that this would be a good segment for us because my knowledge, you know, doesn't really extend past like maybe 96 to 2006. You, you know what I'm saying? We love our EGs, our EKs, our EFs. All of us compiled that early 90s JDM legend, JDM golden era of Hondas. We know all the stuff that we can know, motor swaps, parts, those companies, features, all the cool stuff that came in that era. But there's, I think, a few of us who either have grown up, they started to have kids, they need a newer car, they can't really fit them in their 90s Conda. You know, it's just not safe. You need a little bit more protection. You don't really know what to get as far as a new car. And that's what's really hard because I'll be, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be honest with you guys. You go to a dealership and you start looking at a car, then this guy's like looking at you and shit. And you're like, man... I don't, I don't really like this. And I used to have a joke that I was like, if you ever wanted to feel like what it feels like for a girl to be walking on the street, walk into a Honda dealership. Yeah. Anyway, so I wanted to bring in a new segment right here where I'm like, hey, let's talk about new cars. Let's see what new technology, new Honda has to, you know, offer to the table. Where are we progressing? What new features do we have? What new models are coming out? And specifically, I'm a little bit interested on the new 2020, 2021, Civic Type R. There's a lot of additions. I think they got a new color. There's a lot of stuff I don't know about and I really wanted to get involved with. So I reached out to my homie, Honda Pro Jason, to say, hey, I got this idea. I wanna bring new car content to the Honda Recap. I know we got the recap going on. I know I got the discussions going on, but I think it'd be good to get our education on, on what's happening right now new in Honda. So I'd like to present Honda Pro Jason talking about the 2020 
Civic Type R, its new features, what it's all about, and then, you know, in the future, I want to know more about new Hondas, and I figure we can all get educated together. So, take it away, Jason. Thanks, Christian. I'm Han Pro Jason with my quarantine beard in my quarantine house. Well, today I want to talk to you guys about all the changes in the new 2020 Honda Civic Type R, and there are a ton of them. In fact, I own a 2017 Honda Civic Type R, and honestly, I didn't think they could change the car. I didn't think they needed to change the car, but man, did they need to change the car. So starting from the outside, there's a new color. The color is called Boost Blue, and it looks amazing in person. So some of the things they've changed. A lot of people know there's been some cooling issues on the track with some of the Civic Type Rs. So they've improved the aero, the airflow from the front, and they had to change the aero. Because if you guys look around the vehicle, all these crazy wings and spoilers and everything, they're all functional. So when they changed the front grille, that actually changed the downforce. So they had to change the front bumper and the chin spoiler to make up for that downforce that they lost, giving the car more air coming through the radiator. So this actually was able to, with the new radiator, was able to drop the temps up to 18 degrees, which can make a big difference on the track. Now also, the suspension has been changed. And this car is a track monster. I mean, it's the fastest car in the Nürburgring. So it didn't really need a lot of suspension upgrades, but it has active dampeners. So it's all computer controlled. And there's three different drive modes. There's a Comfort, the Plus R, and the Sport mode. Well, what they've done is they've updated the computer software, so now it can adjust the suspension up to 10 times faster. They've also added new rear bushings that have been stiffened and 10% stiffer compliance bushings for better handling. And that's just the handling of the car. The brakes have also been improved, which again, I didn't think they needed to improve the brakes, but they moved to a two-piece front rotor which is gonna lower unspring weight by five pounds per wheel and also make the car stop much faster, keep brake fade low and cooling is better too because it's two piece rotor. That's just some of the things on the outside that's changed. Once you get inside the new Type R, it is a whole new ball game. They have a new Alcantara steering wheel with a matching Alcantara shift boot, which makes sense because before they were leather there was nothing else leather inside the car other than these two. So the switching over to Alcantara makes a lot of sense. They also have a counterweighted shift knob now. It's kind of a teardrop shape to make much more exact shifts, which is going to make the car much more fun to drive. And then getting into technology. This is really my specialty. This is really what I love so much. They have a brand new data logger. They call it Data Log R. R because Type R, you get it. Ha ha, funny, funny. The Type R is really a track car built for the street. So now Honda has included what they call a data logger. And it's basically gives you all the information you need to know about what's going on in your engine and on the track on your seven inch screen inside the car. So now you're gonna have intake temps, you're gonna have oil temps, all your fluids, you can check them all out, you can see what gear you're in, you can see all the data coming from the car on this data logger and track information. Now Honda calls this track information the log R, it's Honda log R, logger, log R, it's funny how they did that. This will show you all your track info. So to show you how smooth you are on the track, all your speeds when you're coming in and out of turns, it'll show you how fast you're going on the track, your track times compared to professional racers. It'll compare everything using Honda's GPS. And what's great is so when you're on the track, you're on whatever track you want, it'll show you the smoothest route and how you compare to a professional driver. And so you can make yourself faster and faster by looking at this, analyzing it, and not just analyzing it on the car, there's actually an app for it on Apple and Android. So now you can take this app and you can see all your temps, you can see exactly where you are on the track, how fast your turns were. I mean, it's really amazing. There's been some aftermarket companies that have done stuff like this, but the fact that Han is building, building this into their vehicle, pretty incredible. And now the last thing, the last is gonna be safety. Now, before you guys go crazy, I know it's a track car. Honda has included their safety suite of technologies. So this is all Honda sensing. Now, this isn't the car driving by itself. This is actually ways that it can improve your drivability. It can improve your long distance driving. I don't have it in my car in my 2017, and I wish I did. These are Honda sensing technicians like adaptive cruise control. 
So when you set your cruise control, it'll adapt to the speed of the car in front of you. So you don't have to consistently turn off your cruise, turn on your cruise, go around that guy, it'll automatically start on for you. Lane keep assist. This is really nice. This will actually keep your car in your lane just in case you veer off a little bit. Let's say you look down at your phone, you drop something in the back seat, you go around to talk to your kids for a second, you turn around and you're in another lane. We've all done it. This technology that's built into the new car now will keep you in the lane. So there's a whole bunch of these automatic high beams. You ever turn your high beams on and forget they're on? You don't have to do that anymore because it automatically will dim them when lights come on towards you. So these are all new safety features, all standard on the new Civic Type R. So as you guys can see, the new Civic Type R compared to the old one, which was amazing, is just that much better. So I hope you guys learned a little bit more about the new Civic Type R. I look forward to showing you guys in the coming weeks more cool stuff about new Hondas coming out. And as always, guys, I'm the Honda Pro, and now you're in the know. All right, thanks, Jason. I really appreciate you taking the time to actually make that and in the future make more videos for us so that we can all be in the know and also get to know all the other things that are going on right now in Honda, just Honda as the brand. I got a lot of people telling me that they'd also be interested in this kind of thing. And I'm telling you right now, I'd also really be interested in this because I recently just got a new 27 Honda Civic four-door 10th gen Civic. I'm going to do a video kind of going all around that car. We needed a cool car. My girlfriend and I, we needed a good car that's just going to last a really long time. I've got, you know, I've got my cars. Every now and then I got to trust them. We got a car for her. I never knew like, hey, you know, is this going to last? And I'm like, dude, I can't take it anymore. So I got a cool 10th gen Civic. I'm going to make a whole video going over that. It's a really cool car. A lot of cool stuff in there. And I'm really excited that car is going to last. Literally, I just wouldn't need another car. But like I said, I'm really excited that Jason decided he, he wanted to come aboard, do some new car technology talk, kind of go over things like that. I hope you guys are really excited about it. Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, with that said, let's get into this week's recap. And I want to start this out with Boosted Boys. Kyle has had the Prelude apart for a long time right now, and he finally got all the pieces together to put this Prelude back together. I think a lot of you know, the last we saw it, it was a, like a thousand horsepower Prelude. It's really insane. It really sucked to see it kind of like be taken apart, but now it's getting back together. These guys are out there hustling ever since he got back from Florida. I think they've been to the track once or twice since now. So that's really cool. We got the MR2, we got the Routacy, we got the Prelude. We got a bunch of really awesome projects out there with the boys working on. I'm excited for what's to come. This year is like we're right in the middle. Things are crazy right now, but it has not stopped you guys from progressing. Following that, speaking of progression, we got Zosh getting new parts for Christina. In the latest video, you can kind of see he got an awesome new valve cover. He got a dope new cluster from Wireware. Really interested in getting one of those because I love LCDs. I love bringing new tech into our cars. Having that screen there really made the dash come alive. I'm really excited for you, man. Keep building this thing. I don't even know what else you have up your sleeve to keep this going, but I'm really hoping you get to the track very soon. I know I talked to you recently about wanting to actually get this car tracked Fix whatever you need, man. You're going to love it. You will literally become addicted. Following that, speaking of addiction, and speaking of getting to the track, we've got Dana Young Static out there with the budget K-Series CRX currently getting built. Really awesome to know that you uh, you kind of like, you know, did a cool thing with max speeding rods. You got a new K-Series intake manifold. I love the fact that you take a brand new part and you just, you chop it. That's just amazing. You just chop it. You make it work. Obviously, it needed to to work, but I love the fact that nothing stops you. You made a Felpro template, chopped it, got it on the car. Next steps, getting that thing turned on. How much knowledge you have on just this chassis is insane to know what bolts go where. Just putting it in the dash, it's like second nature. I love every single video. Following that, we got K-Bros, K-Swapping, being a Neum 2. I don't know. They got some crazy stuff going out there in Florida, man. I'm really happy that you guys are back making videos, putting stuff out. You got a cool project, case swapping, literally everything you guys can possibly do out there. Keep it up. Following that, we got Hunter tuned, long awaited, getting Barney the Civic all the way to the Wisconsin drag strip. You know what I'm saying? So you're out there. I don't even know where that accent came from, but I'm pretty sure it was, it was pretty good, right? I think it was pretty good. Anyway, so Barney Civic, you got that probably one and a half shops ago and you've kept it going right now. Full front end, huge slicks. I'm really curious to see how well this car is going to hold up. We all know you build the cars to abuse. I'm really excited for it. Next up, I want to talk about Honda How To. This guy has very instructional videos. He made one really, really long time ago on how to assemble a D16 for boost. 
did really well. And then so he's kind of, you know, taking that on of how to build different motors. Really awesome guy, very knowledgeable. And I like how he just really breaks down how to build a B16, which basically can go over to any sort of B series. But if you've ever been interested to just sit down and watch the video to kind of get some, you know, visual knowledge of how things actually go down or how they should be built and tips and tricks, definitely a video to check out Honda How To. After that, we've got Deadbeat Garage. If you guys have been watching, he got a D series. He got a DA for his son. It kind of needed some things. It actually went to the junkyard, and I don't know where you guys are in Arizona, but this junkyard has cars piled on top of cars. You don't even get to bring tools in. You just tell them what you want. I guess they go extract them, and then you just you, know, you just take them home. Actually, not so bad. You know, you don't have to really get dirty. You can just show up, say, hey, I want this, 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 and this, and then you go home. But it looks like they didn't pay that much. They got literally everything his son needed for the car. Taillights, front and rear back seats, skunk two lower control arms. I did see some form and function uh, suspension in there, so hopefully you got those. If you did, bravo. But this DA is looking to get built very quickly, and it's really awesome to see how fast you've ramped up the vehicles in your driveway, dude. Following that, we got Keep Gunning with the B-Series EK hatch that's getting built right now. I believe its name is Kobe, all yellow. I think we know why, but really awesome to see this build. I'm really happy that you go ahead and you're going to give some uh, give some clout to B-Series and build a really beautifully looking one. And I'm really excited because you're basically doing exactly what you do for K-Series, for B-Series, building the car to, to the spec that we expect for you and the channel and just... I don't know, just keeping the bar really high. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not positive on what's gonna be done. I believe it's gonna be raffled. I'm not 100%, sorry I didn't, I, you know, I'm not up to speed with what exactly is going on with this car, but I've been loving the videos. I mean, just trying to catch up on so much content, but man, I, I got, you know, on a run of two or three videos of just getting the dash put in and, and the paint and the engine getting built. And it's just like, damn, dude. There's some some quality parts, but even even if you don't go high end quality parts, just the uh, the just the effort and care that is going into this build is making it incredibly clean. Props to you. Now, next up, I want to bring back up Obsessed Garage. A lot of people were upset. He's taking an EM1 and he's putting a different motor in it. And then after a while, people kind of changed their tunes and they're like, all right, all right. At least he's at least he's being respectful for what he's doing. But since then, we've got color correction tint being taken off and possibly reapplied. I don't, I forget, but the last video he's doing a little paintless dent repair and that itself, if you've ever sat down with somebody who can do a little paintless dent repair with a light and a heat gun and, and pull out a little dimple out of a quarter panel and you don't ruin the paint or anything else, it's magic. It's just pure magic and wizardry how these guys are able to just manipulate metal and, and you're good. So props to you, man. I'm really excited that you're at least taking the EM1 as full as you can and actually building something incredibly proper. I think if you went K-Series in this, it would be like definitely, definitely kind of uh, changing out the heart and spirit of the car. I think putting a B18 in it would be a good run at it. Next up, I've got more Fab Industries. I wanted to throw this channel in here because he's doing a multi-part series on how to TIG weld. He's a few episodes in right now where he's actually showing you how to cut and prep material, which is definitely like a good 50% of the work. Obviously learning to weld, put down proper welds, how to do thicknesses and everything like that of the metal as you're doing it. But preparation and what you actually need to get what you want welded set up prior is a lot of the work. And the more you learn and the more you prep, everything turns out better same with paint same with body work same with everything everything is in the prep so definitely check out more fab industries again if you just i've always been interested in welding this would be a cool thing to kind of watch because you don't ever know in the future you might end up at a buddy's house he has a welder he says you want to go at it you can maybe feel a little bit more confident because you saw some things and you're like all right let me try to replicate it instead of just going at something blind Next up, we've got Barbus Life. Haven't talked about this guy in a while. He's had a couple projects, and in the latest video, he's actually prepping again, priming and getting some prime down on an engine bay for a build that he's working on right now. Really cool guy, down to earth, really awesome videos. Really excited that you're making them again. I see you got a couple cars in the garage, so I'm really excited to see you put a little effort and time into those projects. All right, and last but not least, I want to talk about gears and gasoline. I kind of talked to them about a good bit last episode, so I kind of wanted to end this one with kind of going over their build. I think the final price tag, I think the final price tag for the build was somewhere around $20,000, 23000 dollars in that actual vicinity. And I think a lot of us watching this video right now are instantly thinking, like, wow, I could make that much, much less. He did break it down to tell you that you could essentially make this build much much less, but he used a lot of awesome parts. He did admit that he got a lot of sponsorship, but he did pay for a lot of those parts. And he tried to pull the 10 tenths 
of that horsepower out of the car. And we all know to actually do that, you do need to spend a little bit more money to get the parts to allow you to do that. You can't do it with an OEM size throttle body. You have to get to the 80 or the 72 millimeter. You need a bigger intake manifold. You do need E85 bigger injectors. You're not going to be able to do it with the RDXs, which are just OEM injectors. You're going to have to spend the money for some ID injectors or whatever injectors you want to go with. And then at that same time, prep your whole fuel system for E85. I can go on this for a while, but we do know that there are things you have to do to get your car ready to be able to make the power that he wants and reliably to the point where he could take it to grid life and complete, and I believe street class is which the one he was building it for. Really crazy to know you spent $23,000 on a Civic, but I think if we all sit down and think about how much money we've put into our car, we saw within two hours, basically two hours, quote unquote, of video time, how much effort he put into this car, but some people have had their cars for 10 or 15 years and probably have, you know, probably more than 23 grand because sometimes you didn't want that part. Sometimes you changed it, but you still bought that part and you still have it. We can nickel and dime ourselves all we want, but some of us have spent more than $23,000 on our EGs or some like an EK. So it's really cool to see him sit down and kind of break down why he spent that kind of money. I'm not going to lie. When I saw it, I was like, $23,000. That's, that's crazy. Who wants to do that? But at the same time, if I sat there, you know, when you go to JHP or, or Tri-State or anywhere else that you go online and you start pricing out like, oh, I want this, 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 this. You put that in your cart and you're already like, what's that's 15. And then depending on where you live, you got taxes and then shipping. And then before you know it, like 15 grand goes a long way and you haven't even built your motor. That's just OEM. He went and got a K24A and then put a K20 head on it. That's probably the cheapest way you could go. You know, it's like $800 block, but then you don't need the head anymore. But you could have still made 220 with that head, but you wanted more. So you got the K20 head and now you spent probably like four or five for that. Now you put, you know what I mean? Before you know it, you're almost at like a K20A, but you still want the K24 bottom end. So like now you're just min maxing all this crazy stuff. So, like I said, definitely check out this video. He explains it all, cashes it out, shows you dollar per dollar what he did to make this building. For, you know what, for all intents and purposes, you did good. I really love the car. It came out really awesome. I would have loved for you to keep the CEs just because, you know, Volk. But at the same time, you built an awesome car, and I'm really excited to see it actually compete out at Grid Life. All right, guys, thanks you guys for tuning in for yet again another episode of the Honda recap make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up and that bell so you're notified every monday night at 6 p.m west coast time when this thing airs also head over to hondavlogs.com slash shop pick yourself up a shirt hoodie or sticker or anything else you guys want to support the channel i really appreciate appreciate everybody who has stay tuned next week i got you know more channels just like we talked about this time i got other things i want to talk about let me know like we talked about at the beginning fg2 fa5 chassis which one do you like more which one do you think is underrated which one would you rather have? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really enjoying reading them. I'm going to start responding to a lot of them. As of right now, I'll try to respond to everybody, and I'm trying to respond to absolutely everybody. So if you respond, definitely let me know. At the same time, guys, I really love the conversation that you guys are having while you're in there. I'm really hoping you guys are excited for new car news, a new segment here for the recap moving forward. I personally want to learn about the new stuff that's happening now in Honda, and I think a lot of us who are Honda heads, really, you know what, this could be a good slippery slope into kind of keeping up on the times, what's going on as Honda, the brand, Honda technology, and new models coming out. Because you know what, we got new colors, trims, uh, different motors, Earth Dreams is still a growing platform, the L-Series is still kind of going. We got a lot of stuff to learn, guys, and I, for one, am really excited to keep the knowledge going for the Honda platform. So with that said, guys, thank you for joining me for another week of the Honda Recap. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.